Well, before I start, my name is Amina Ali Keki, and I'm the one of the Chubok girl who was adopted by Boko Haram in year 2014. Uh, and I'm the one who first girl escaped from the captivities with a baby girl. Uh, she's three months and three weeks. So I escaped in year 2016, so I just did two years and months in the captivities. The only thing I can remember in 2014, we are all in school writing our first SSC examination before Boko Haram come and adopt us and moved with us to the Sambisa forest, so that's where they keep us there in the bush. Amina, same question. What are your memories of that particular horrific day? What do you remember, if anything at all? Sorry, Ajumai. This is Amina. Sorry, forgive me. I'm Jumai Mute by name. I'm part of the Chibok girls that are adopted in 2014. 2014. At that day, I was so afraid and worried because of what happened to us. And when I remember even I released, I came out from the captive. The things is so hard for me. But Sha, yeah, everything is well for me now. So in, in twenty fourteen, had you ever heard of Boko Haram before they picked you up? I I did not heard about them before. Just they come with unexpected. Had you heard about Boko Haram and their activities, Amina? Yeah, before 2014, we were here about Boko Haram uh, and there have been that some school and destroyed schools in Bono State. Uh, like Bama School, Kwandega, uh, and other school they have destroyed. And we have students who came from that school and joined us in GS Chibok. So before 2014, uh, to, we don't even think that they will come to Chibok at that time so we are living happily we don't think about such thing could happen in chubok at that time until 14 april and what we have been taught from our teachers used to tell us that anytime we heard about Boko Haram and the, we don't know in case maybe they will come to our best, but when we hear anything about Boko or something like that happen in the town, we should not be worried. They will not come and do anything harmful to us. And so your teachers kept reassuring you that you are safe in school. Yes, and if in case they enter school, they are not going to do something for us. Maybe they could destroy the school just and leave. So we should not be worried, nothing will happen. So we were taught like that, so we couldn't do anything until that day, and they even came, we think that something is going to do like that, like usually they used to tell us. But until we see, they entered our school and packed us. Jumai, do you remember the journey from school into Sambisa? What do you remember of that trip? I remember what happened that day. Just they enter like they claim for us that they are a soldiers. They come to rescue us, nothing will happen to us. But we don't know that they're the actual people. And well, were they dressed in military uniform? 
Yes, they are with AK or they are with AK and Kaki soldiers. They were and they came, they say that there are soldiers. Girls come out, let us rescue you, nothing will happen to you that day. And we we don't have the experience about what is happening from that time and we came out from where we are in our room and gathered together. After that, they start asking all some questions about how they destroy some other school. We, we don't know they're the people. But later on, they ask us about our students who are boys because we are mixed with boys and girls what questions were they asking where are the boys or what yes, exactly where is the hostel for boys but we told them that they are not staying in school that day they will be doing so bad when they come to school they will go back to their home only girls are staying in campus so the that in thing, itself is a bit strange, isn't it? Um, was was that sort of normal that you have a mixed school where the girls are in boarding and the boys are day students? Is that sort of was that always the way your school was? Yes. Okay. Is the combined school, but they are doing so bad. We are staying in campus. Okay. So they ask you questions. Then what happened? And uh, we respond that. The boys are not staying in school, but they think like we are lying to them and they're starting asking some. Maybe, I don't know, the, like our relatives are part of them. So they say we should tell them the truth about the boys. And we say that the truth we have, they're be doing so bad, they are not staying in school. So bad is an exam, right? No. What is so bad? Just they are coming in school and go for back that. for the okay. children. They are off campus. Yes. So so they ask you all these questions and then, then what happened? We are responding to them that is the truth we are talking we are telling them that the boys are doing this, but they stating like we are telling them lies about the boys and they ask some of them the guys i think that guy is part of chibok guy and the guy told the whole truth and they believe in us at what point did you realize they were going to take you out of campus um, I mean, well after they have finished asking us some of the questions and we answer them and after they finished searching the rooms, they couldn't find any uh, male student in the school. So they just pointed two of girl among us to show them where the library is and store. And they asked us about matches and they say oh, we need matches and we see that we are not cooking. And they say, ha, you are not cooking. So how are you so far? And we say that uh, uh, is our food is f coming from government, and they say that wow, you these people you are really enjoying will see some people outside so far, and you you are just enjoying yourself. So and this asks us that where is the machine uh, for making block for this school, and we say that we don't know. So they keep us they keep asking us a lot of questions about that machine and. We didn't tell them the truth about where the machine it is. And they said that, okay, so we are going to take you out. So you have to follow us. And if you try any no signs to escape, we are going to kill you here. So that's how they, start, they said that we should follow them. So that's how we follow them out to the gate. So they just keep us there and start boarding the school. And some of them enter the hall, try to pack a uh, store, try to pack the food items. And they think that uh, the hall and the store is different, but it's the same building. 
So some of them entered the store trying to pack, in, pack the food and they just put slide on this hall. So both hall and the store just catch fire. So they just start shouting and calling them, say that they should come out because the, the store yet catch fire. So that's how after they couldn't pack the food at them and they come out and they still ask us again about that machine. Where were your teachers and matrons while all of this was going on? Well, you know, before, for the first time, they didn't enter the school directly. They just come and pass our school, enter the town, and after they didn't find anybody in the town because people are hearing them far away and people run to the bush to hide. Even the soldiers, they run and go and hide. So since they didn't find anybody in the town, they just come back and they start argue among themselves that there's no student in the school because at that time, uh, I mean, say like a strike or what should I call, uh, we are not in school because of the incident of Boko Haram. So we just go home and after two weeks and we just been called that all SS3, they should come to school so that they have to write their nickel and wire. So school had been shut down because yes. there was concern about insecurity. Yes. And then your class was recalled back yes. to come and write exams. Yes. That's what you're saying. So were there any teachers with you on campus at the time of this um, raid by Boko Haram and the abductions? At that time, nobody. You were left alone in school by yourselves? Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, between them coming and eventually taking you away, do you, did you, do you have a sense of how long that took? How many hours? You know, uh, the time they, they entered our school is 9.40 something. So after, before they finished their asking question, finishing destroying the school, uh, and before we left, Chubok Town is almost 1 a.m. So at least four hours of them operating yeah. happily. Did you guys try to raise the alarm? Were you able to reach anybody or nothing? We didn't meet with anybody. And you got into, did they have trucks? How did they transport you? Yeah, after they finished everything and they said that, okay, they would keep us and wait for the boss, their boss to come from the town. So after their boss come and they still they tell, told their boss that they found students in the school. So what are they going to do with the students? And the boss said that he's not come with his empty car and turn it back with empty car. If with us, they have to move with us and go with us. So that was how. And, and the journey itself to Sambisa, how long did it take? And can you remember what was going through your head as you realized that these men were taking you away? Um, do you mind? Mm, from Chibok to Sambisa, we trek like three days. Before Walking we... on foot? Yes, it's with the car. OK. And where we are going, we have our hair tie and our shoes. We are be throwing on the road. Maybe we are be thinking that maybe some people will follow us to know where the exactly where we are moving. So you were leaving markers along yes. the way. Yes. Right? Yeah. When you realized nobody was coming, how did you feel? Some people coming like our parents and some securities agents follow us, but because of their too much more than them and they have many materials of fighting, they can't catch us because of the so you knew people were following, yes, but they didn't have after. the arms or the numbers to be yeah. able to and take on the day after, after we leave the is the next day that our parents follow us back. 
and it's just only our parents that follow us. And they met with one old man, and he told them that, you people, uh, do you think that you can able to get your children from these people? Since you are only people follow them and you don't have any security following you. If you know what is good for you, you, have, you better go back to get security so that the people have a guns that can fight this book. And if not, you can't copy with them, you have to go back. So it's just only our parents that follow us the next day. And, and we have a few people that can sort of shed light on the conversation that went on between, I think, parents and government. When parents pointed out that their kids had been taken and they knew exactly where they were. But just talk to us briefly about Boko Haram, if you can, if this is not too much trouble for you, too much trauma. Well, according to what I know, uh, the life there in the Boko Haram's places, they just do their life like the way we hear people doing our life because they even have a many places calling this place and have names of place and even market too. Okay, Bangani ba, Balintambeki. Okay, in the next case, so in Jida, so ka kai kuwurina. Ya suka yi da ku, me suka ce muku, me suka ga ya muku. Sun buge ku, sun zage ku, ta yaya suka ce wa za su aura wa yi ba za su aura ba amma in ba ki son magana it is okay. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Uh, after that they just kept us and start teaching us the Quran and after that they just start asking us that uh, who who is wish to convert to the Islamic or something and they at that night uh, even Shekel too came and he explained us why he adopt us and he said that they don't want to hear anything like school continue in this Nigeria because school is not good, school is a taboo. So they don't want to hear anything like school. And he said again, he said that it's not that school that is taboo, it's what people are doing in that school that is taboo, which is uh, teaching children uh, subject like biology, geography, it, it will usually spoil children's uh, behavior. So, and then they say that the only school they want to hear in Nigeria, they want to hear Islamic school, only Islamic school. And that one, they don't want to uh, hear like a combined school, which is girl and uh, boy school. Mm -hmm. So, some of you, wasu amusa aurin dole me zaki iya gaya mana game da wannan they have treated us badly because of the religion some of us said that it would be but after all they deceiving us that when we collect islamic they will bring us back to our parents so from there we agree to them that yes we want our we want our parents after we collect their religion and they say that we did not have we did not know how to read quran so they want us to learn want to how keep to keep you until you've learned right? yes so from there when we found out that they're deceiving us, we said we don't want to follow them. Just we want our parents, we want to come back to our parents. So they think that we are deceiving them. From there, they take some step that they didn't catch us because of religion things or some things like that. They catch us because to pay what government are did to them. But 
we don't know what our government did to them, but after all, the Shekho explained some things to us that because when they come to Nigeria and fight people, the the soldiers are kept, uh, catch their children and put into the prison. So we Chibok girls represent their children. What he told us after the, the treatment where we said that we don't want this religion, we want our parents. At which point did they start getting violent and insisting that you marry some of them? This marriage thing is not by force, but according to what we face there, they give us some violent treatment. Like when you don't want to marry them, you will be their slave. And when we say we don't want to marry, they will come with some people, like they will sell us, they will do some things to us badly. Some, so from there, some take fear in them. And they say it's better they get married to them than to do the punishment. But some take the risk to do the punishment. That's what happened. Okay. Who came out first among the two of you? Amina. Okay. Amina, tell me your story of escaping Boko Haram. How did that happen? Well, for me, after they bring the rules that uh, um, they, they first start asking us with, uh, about to get married, they say that, okay, get married in Islamic religion since you already know everything about Islamic, about Islamic. So get married in Islamic, is it uh, good or bad? And we say that, yeah, it's good, but when is in a good time and when your parents agree, that's, the good of get my but now this one that you are asking us is not good it's a taboo and it's that okay so after they bring the rules and i think that oh so if this is their rules uh i may use by different people so i have to choose one person to get married to so that i can be free and only one person so after they bring to me and we discuss about and I agree to him and we get married. So after we did two weeks and they just found out that I'm the Chibok girls and the man they bring, he too, he was adopted in Mubi at the time they entered Mubi. So they said that they so want the to man, separate. Let me, let me clarify this. The man you were forced to marry was also abducted. Yeah. And was in the camp with them. Yes. And they said that is the man that will be your husband. Yes. Okay. So after they realized like that, so they said that they want to separate us. And there's one man said that no, they they have they have no right to do that because they we didn't commit something to the religion. So the only thing they will do is just bring some people who will always be with us to, if we did something like escaping and these people will attack us or and bring us back so we can't able to get away to run. So they just bring seven people. To guard you? Yes, okay. to guard us. So anytime like we, we want to go and fetch water or get firewood or uh, go and look for the soap in the bush, so these people always uh, Yes, following us. Yeah, following us. So until one day, and this man, on the first day he went there, that we are about to get married, he said that, uh, I want to tell you something. And if you know that you have, if it was blood sister, if you didn't trust her, don't tell her about our penny. Me too, I'm not a real member of Boko Haram. I was adopted like you. So at that time, I didn't trust. I'm just thinking that maybe he wants to hear something and tell to the people. So I just say that, okay, as you can see, I heard you. So I said that he won't help me escape in the captivities. 
if I wish. So I should not open my and tell somebody and I say, okay. So after we get married and he's starting pushing me to escape, so because of the fear I had, because I can remember there is some time some of my sisters tried to escape. They, all, they, they also did three days. They almost came out and this Boko Haram still attacked them and bring them back. So they tied them. They spent the whole that night on tight. So they almost want to kill them. So because of we are begging them and we pray God help us and they say that, okay, we have to promise to them that any time we try to escape, they're going to kill us. So since that promise, if he pushed me to do that, I'm afraid. I keep telling him that it's not yet time. So until one day, this soldier went there to fight them. So they went there to fight them like three days and the four days remind one place and then they will enter where we are, which is the Minsa Minsa where Shekau living. So that's where we are. So after that, and these people are starting uh, running to the bush. They say that ah, this uh, army has come to the bush. I remember one place they will enter the mission visa, so we have to move. So after that, and he tell me that okay, this is what you can do. You can say that you are going to make your head to your sister, so that if they allow you to pass, then meet. I'll follow you. After that, then we can find our way to escape. So after I went out and they stopped me at the way and they asked me that, where are you going to? And I told them that I'm going to make my hair in my sister's house and they said, that, where are the people who used to follow you? This time you are going along and I said that I didn't see anybody. So that's why I decided to go along. And say that Nalaya. And at this point you'd already had a baby. Yes. yes. So you had your baby with you? Yes. And you just kept walking basically. You left the place and kept walking. Yes. So after that they say that maybe I am trying to do something, try to escape or something. So they just say that I should go back to house. So I didn't argue with them. I just come back. So after that, after we heard these people are running, the Bogans are running that I mean, it's already in St. Visa. So even the people used to guide us, they said, ah, oh, my family, my children. So they left us. So that's how we too we started running, like we are going to hide to the bush. So after we just see the distance between us, so that's how we get our own way. And that's how we escape. So what about you, Jumai? How did you get out of the hand of Boko Haram? Me, I'm rescued from the promise government made to them. I'm part of 82 girls. But me, I'm part of, they did some things for us there. I have Bible there. And we are not doing their Islam. And they think that we are the one convinced some of our girls not to do the religion. We are 22. They carry us to Shekau that they should punish, that she should punish us because of the Bible we have been reading there. And from there, God do the miracle. And he said, she don't want us to do religion, Christian religion in Sambisa. When we want our parents she will, he will come to talk to Nigeria government to come and collect us. And he said that we should sign some papers that one girl, one Boko Haram from prison. But we girls, we didn't agree about that agreement, but we signed that we want our parents. And from there, he said that we must sign this paper that even them, they want their children. So he wanted an exchange. Yes, of exchange. Prisoners, of, right. But we disagreed with them. So from there, they keep us different from the others that didn't hear about the news. Well, I mean, you, you are surrounded by men who are clearly crazy, who yes. are armed, who 
you've seen evidence have the capacity to kill. What gave you the courage to resist? Serious. From there, I have courage because of I have my religion Bible with me. I am reading always, and there is some verses when I read, give me courage. After they say that we should get marriage, or they will give us some punishment, me, I'm thinking that how can I get married to these people who capture me from my parents and keep me in this bush? Who will correct my bride price in this bush? I'm, I'm so discouraged. I'm so worried. I say, and even I look at them, how they are living, how they treat some people, how they kill some people without fearing God in them, and be thinking that, ha, I can't do this work. Better to do this punishment than to do it. But I keep in mind that one day I will have my way. And there is things. Um, I'm interested in getting a sense of what life has been like since you came back, that journey to recovery, to sort of becoming part of society, because I know that we've heard stories of some of the stigma that has been attached to some of the girls that were abducted, and particularly for you, mm -hmm. um, because you know, you've had a child. She's how old now? She's 80. She's 80. You say that with a smile. You clearly love your daughter. Okay, she's lovely. 80 years now. Okay, so what was the journey like from sort of coming out of that place with a baby? Talk to me through that. Um, that experience of coming out, having to tell your story, explain things, and then rebuilding your life. Wow. How I escaped is so hard, hard, because I did one month plus before I escaped, because I don't know where, sometimes we used to still repeat our back because of the so you, is when you say big. one month, you mean you were working for a month? Yes. Right, right. Yeah. So we start uh, moving in December. So it's 4th April 2016. Before we come out, uh, 17 May 2016. So that's wow. one month plus. And you can summarize it of that journey where you're now back in university trying to rebuild your life. Okay. Well, when I escaped, the first people I met, I met with these people in Dambua uh, called Mbanga. So uh, we just met them and. Banga I, is essentially militias. Just, yeah, vigilante militias. Yes, yeah. yes. So. Uh, we just met them at the camp uh, in Dambua, local government is still under Borno State. So I just told them that I'm the one who, uh, among the Chibo girls was adopted in 2014. And they said, that, are you sure? And I, I say yes. And they said, that, okay, we have to ask you some questions if you are sure about what you are telling us. Because since this thing happened, there's many people used to come and deceive us. So we have to know the truth. So the, the first thing they asked me, they said that, okay, can you tell you a name for us? And I said that I'm Amina Alinkeki. And they said, that, okay, what are you doing in that day and that day? And I told that I, we, are, we were writing our SSCA exam and the first, uh, on 14 April, on 14, 2014, on Monday night, uh, Boko Haram entered Chibok and they adopt us. I said that, okay, can you remember the subject you were writing? And I say yes. Uh, so they just wanted to make sure you are who you say you yes. are. And once they were sure, what happened? So after that, they found out and um, the red Chibok girls, they said, okay, are you able to know your way to your village? And I say, yes, of course. And they say, okay, we are going to go to Chibok town, then we will take you to the, the camp there, and they will 
find some people in your village then maybe you will know them so after they took me to chubok and they bring some two people and the one of them is my neighbor and he's my brother to me too and the one person is uh, still my neighbor and his uncle to me so and they said that yes of course she's our neighbor and this one she's daughter to me and that person said that this one is sister to me. So that's how they took me to my village, which is called Balala. Uh, so after that, and we came to our house, and they said that we, I should not come out. I should wait for them. So they entered my house and called my mom out. So they told my mom that she should wait. And so they were asking her. So I said, uh, this one that I see my mom, I can't wait to you to come and call me. I just jump out of, uh, out of the car and come and help my mom. And before she turned out, she saw, she saw me and she started crying. And I keep telling her that you, you don't need to cry. You have to be happy because you don't know that you can still see me. You, tango, you have to be thankful that did, I'm alive. Did you have any problems blending back into your community because you had married and had a child? Was it a problem for you or was your family really understanding? Yeah, sometimes it has be a problem to me, and sometimes it's not. So it's a mixed bag. Where yeah. are you now? Now I'm living in Yola. Okay, and what are you doing in Yola? I'm schooling in Yola. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jumei, that same path for her slightly dim out of um, Sambisa. And what are you doing now? I come from Sambisa, we went to Abuja because we are plenty and government is the one rescue us. After, uh, after Abuja, we went back to school in Yola. We did like three months and we went back to our parents in the village. So you are back in Chibok? Yes. And you live in Chibok? Yes. And you are not scared to stay in Chibok? I'm not. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>